Happy Sunday. This fall, I'm moving into apartment style residences. Things have like three rooms in them and have like a full size kitchen, and it's really nice. And um, I'm moving in with about five other people. So, inside of each of these rooms, there's one sort of like closet that's actually like a den workspace office type area. It has like all electrical outlets, it has lights, it has like a coat rack, and everything like that it is just big enough to fit a bed in. So what I plan to do is live in that room, but I'm going to build a loft bed. For the past several months, I have been working on how to build a loft bed. I've been developing plans, going over drafts, and I've been working really hard on trying to figure out what is the best, sturdiest way that I can build this loft bed outside of the closet so that it will fit inside the closet. And today, I'd like to share that. Places that when you don't want an employee to help you, they always seem to find you. But when you do want an employee, you seem to can't find you can't seem to find anyone. I hate those type of places. It sucks. It's stupid. Products found, prices found. Even more importantly, uh, now actually, I'm I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that I'm down the hill right now, and I'm gonna go wander around, and then back up top to talk more about the loft. I was walking around Walmart and I found this shoe. Its logo is also the Beats logo upside down. These are the loft bed plans. They look pretty much ununderstandable in their current format, so I'm going to redo them. But I'm going to do it a bit different. I'm going to need this knife, scissors, tape or glue. I couldn't find any normal tape, so I have to use shitty medical tape, but it'll work. Some pencils, a ruler. A sharpie, this triangular ruler, and this. Uh, not the fan, just the cardboard box. Using this supply list, I can create a 3D model using this cardboard. that I'd have to construct it in different chunks in order to fit inside the room. So that's why I've sort of designed it to have a bunch of different pieces. And this right here is a corner. This corner comprises a two by six and a two by four. 
screwed in together. So it's sort of like that. The tape is the screws. And each of those, so we'll have four, four of those with each longer piece, the 2x6, facing inwards to make it so as if each side is equal. From there, you attach a 2x8 in between two of the corners to make the long width of the bed. So with two sides, I'd be able to then create a cross beam in between each one. It would be shorter than the length of the bed, probably about half. So I'll have to cut these two by fours in half. This is what the rough outline of the bed is gonna look like. In order to actually support a mattress on this, I need to do a bit of bracing inside of the bed frame. And so that's why I'm gonna attach two by fours to the inside to support cross beams that will go across this way. So I'd have my bracing and then the only other thing that I'd need upstairs right here. So yeah, this is it. That's my loft. Uh, that's sort of the idea. I wanted something that I could take apart very easily, so it's all going to be attached with bolts, except for those main pieces like the legs, where it's going to be screwed in. Um, and so because I have these bolts, I can pretty much take it down whenever I may need and store it really easily. So I really hope to be able to expand on it and experiment with different ways to do it, while at the same time make sure that it can actually support me and not have me fall to my death while I'm sleeping. Bye, Mom.